up, Project Church family? So excited you're here. Today is a very big yeah. Sunday. It's our Vision Sunday, and we're super pumped, but yep. what else is going it's on? It's also a special day because it's our nine-year anniversary. Count them up. Since the start of Project Church, it That's was crazy. January 2013. That's crazy. Hard to believe. That is, yeah, that's so powerful. So maybe you were here on that day. Uh, shout out to you if you were, but maybe this is your first day. Either way, if you fall anywhere between those, we're excited you're here and you have a place here at Project Church where you can grow in your faith and, and with friends. Yeah, so there's some special things happening today right here live right. on the porch we're standing in the lobby of the church and right there next to us is the porch what's gonna be on the porch we got before? free zoe tacos like there are no better tacos yeah. in yeah. existence so get nice. here get your zoe tacos anything else going on out there so uh there's gonna be some music oh some photo booth so photo take booth. a family uh photo take some grab some friends just grab some random people yeah. and take a picture why not and Pastor Caleb and Chrissy are going to be team teaching. Ooh, tag team. Tag team. Back team again. Today, it's going to be, uh, you know, a challenge for the vision and the future of Project Church. I'm pumped Church. to hear. And they have a big announcement, too. I'm pumped to so hear what you don't want to miss that. Yeah. Uh, but lastly, we want to encourage you to connect with us online, whether that be sharing this video, or whether that be asking for prayer requests. If you're watching online, there's a link just for us to be praying with you. And we want... Not you just to be watching us, but we want to engage and know how we can help you. That's our vision. Is uh, It's written right over there. Leading all people to find life and freedom in Jesus. In any way we can push you toward closer to Christ. That's what we're all about. Um, also, we have groups uh, coming up. They're launching next week. Uh, matter of fact, if you're interested in, in leading a group, uh, let us know. We have a lunch this afternoon. And after man, second service, after the second Upstairs. service, yeah. we're having having lunch and we're talking about what that means and kind of casting vision for it. Um, so we have a lot of yeah. incredible things. It's happening. a big day. It's a big day, and we're so excited you're here. Are you ready to worship God? Yep. Let's do it. Good morning, church. Come on, everyone, stand up on your feet and let's worship Jesus. Anybody come to worship Jesus this morning? Hey. Hey, when night has fallen, when fear is coming, yeah, still you're calling me. Yeah. Hey, when faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. Come on and sing it. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me, yeah. I've decided I'm not giving up, cause you won't give up on me. You won't. Come on and sing that song. Say, your love is holding on and it won't let go. Sing it, I'm saying. I feel it breaking out like it let go.
those moves. I see y'all out there moving a little bit. How many came to praise the name of Jesus? Come on, let's worship. Let's go. I'm going to hear y'all sing this out. Sing it out, say,
the God of breakthroughs on forever lift you high with all creation cry God we praise you come on and celebrate a good God yeah the Bible says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world that means no matter what the score looks like we always win yeah champion Jesus yeah 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 it's a fixed fight we always win it's a fixed fight we always win yeah it's a fixed fight I've tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe it you would choose someone like me to carry your victory come on perfection could never earn it yeah you give what we don't deserve it the broken things and raise them to glory. Come on, sing it out. Say, you are my champion. Giants fall when you stand.
pastor's conference. It was absolutely amazing. It was at Jesus Culture. And there was a few things that happened is that I was hoping to go there and they was going to give us some like cool little pointers on how to be great leaders. And the first night he was like, I can tell you all these cool things, but without the presence of God, it means nothing. We can tell you how to get cool lighting and maybe figure out how to make the sound sound amazing and better and all the cool things. But if we don't have the presence of God, we don't have nothing. And then later on in the evening, as we waited to transition to another part, one of my sisters from the church came to me and was like, hey, I had a vision that you were sitting at the bed. And she didn't know my story. She didn't know I grew up in foster care. And one day I'll be able to hope to share my testimony with you guys. But um, I felt lonely as a kid. And she seen a vision of me sitting at the bed. And then she's seen me now. And she said she just watched me worship. And the song we're getting ready to sing is, is called Do It Again. And she said, that same God that was there with you in foster care is here with you right now. And what that simple reminder was, was that no matter what it feels like, and no matter what it looks like, Jesus is always there. And I know it doesn't sound like it makes sense. And and I know you don't know every piece of foster care and maybe you heard of it and it was great, but it wasn't great and wasn't perfect for me. But because Jesus was there, he did a miracle in my life. And sometimes we forget about the miracle because our circumstance, but how many trusting in God to do it again in your life? How many truly trust in God to do it again in your life? Yes, God. Come on, just begin to just lift your hands up to heaven right now, all over this place. If you're trusting God and you're believing God to do it again, just lift those hands all over this room. God, we trust you in all things. Yes, God. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet yeah. Waiting for change to Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet Oh, 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 oh. Let me see you, church Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still 
chains are breaking. Chains are breaking. And mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. We're standing here only because you made, yeah. Yes, we're standing here only because you made a way. Yes, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way as you move mountains and you cause the walls to fall with your power you perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made yes we're standing here only because you made a way Jesus to yourself. I think these are some words that we need to hear again. He just keeps making ways. Even when our eyes can't see it, even when our minds can't perceive it, he just keeps on making ways. And God, we're here on Vision Sunday, not because we're so convinced all the time that things are going to go our way, but we believe that you're going to make a way again. Rivers in the deserts. Hope in the broken places. Peace where there's anxiety. Hope where there's broken dreams in this place. 
you just keep on making waves. And this is why we gather on Sundays, not because we've made it here in our own efforts, but because you keep on making ways for us. God, thank you that even when we're weak, you make ways so we can see your strength again, God. Thank you that when we've got nothing left, you bring us here again to remind us who you are again. God, we don't want to just be in the structure of worship and a message and where we get out of the way. God, we want you to make a way. And God, if our back's got to be against the wall, if our mind can't perceive what you're telling us, if we've stopped believing the truth for a moment, God, I pray for every person in here and for myself. However you got to show up, God, would you show up today? If you got to walk through walls today, would you come? If you got to move mountains out of the way, would you come? But we are here because we need to see that you are the one that makes a way for us when we can't do it anymore. God, we need you. God, we're desperate for you. Make a way right now. Make a way right now. For the one who can't see it, make a way. Somebody receive those words. He's making a way. He's moving mountains and you don't even know it right now. He's making a way. God, we thank you in these moments that our eyes are fixed on you. And though we don't know, what to know what's coming next, we know that, this, that these lyrics that say do it again, they imply one thing, that you've already done it before. And so you will do it again. We thank you for that. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I don't know how we transition from there, but can we give Jesus a round of applause? We're 10 minutes over worship, and I don't care. <laughs> Y'all are going to miss the start of the football game. Say, say hello to somebody. Take a seat while I try not to cry anymore. somehow I'm supposed to land the plane now. Um, <laughs> what are we doing here again? This is the moment where I say, hey, if you've been faithful, thank you for giving. I don't think I need to say anything else. Um, if you haven't been faithful with your giving, listen, worship is not just singing songs and going through this every single time. You know, worship is it's opening up your hand. It's trusting God. I think that today God has something that he wants to give to you, but you got to be first willing to open up your hands for it. And sometimes opening up your hands means being willing to give it back to God. So today, if you have not given back to God, I want, I want to tell you right now, friend, he will overflow and increase in your life when you do that. Uh, but let me pray for everybody giving this morning, and then we're going to transition. There's a great video that shows everything that happened last year. Uh, but God, I just thank you so much this morning. Lord, those are the words today that you just keep making away. Lord, for the one right now that is battling the urge to give, the one that feels you moving in their heart and they know that they need to respond to it, but they don't want to because all they see is the lack. God, I pray that in their obedience that they would just move in faith right now. God, just give and just sow and just trust you and that, God, that they would see that you are a God that overgives, overwhelms oversupplies as they give. And Lord, I pray that the resources that you give would not just be blessed, but Lord, that it would continue to reach hundreds and thousands of more people, not just in Sacramento, but across the globe. God, you can do so much more with the little that we give, and so we trust you with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Check out this video, guys.
Make some noise for all God did in 2021. You can do better than that. Come on, make some noise for all God did. There it is. Good morning, Project Church. <laughs> We're checking our notes. What are we doing here? We are so excited that you're here. Um, it's Vision Sunday. It's also our nine-year anniversary. Will you give it up for God? Nine He's been years. faithful. And I see this church becoming more and more faithful. But we want to tell you real quickly um, about our new series that is going to launch next week. It's called It's Not You, It's, it's Me. me. A relationship series. And so I here say that we, to Chrissy all the time. <laughs> we're giving Not you, you. Yes. It's me. It's great relationship advice for every single one of us. Um, so I want you to deliver this to your significant other this way. Because if there's anything that we've learned in the last two years is that we don't have control over everything, right? But we can control ourselves. So before you tell your significant other, here's a relationship series you need to be at. You're going to say, Here's a relationship series that we can be at together. And this is me saying that it's not you, it's me. And I'm not going to take responsibility in my relationships, whether they're dating, married, future relationships. If you're single, you're going to take responsibility for yourself right now. We are not walking out of this next season broken and victims, right? We're going to have Good. stronger relationships. So this next relationship series, you don't want to miss, but deliver it correctly to your significant other, okay? Yeah, this is going to be for everyone. I mean, single people are like, is this for me? This is going to be for you. Dating, this is for you. Engaged, this is for you. Married, this is for you. Divorced, this is for you. We're going to give you a lot of tools to just grow in your relationships. Chrissy and I have learned a thing or two in 13 years of marriage. Come on. Um, and so we're going to be bringing and sharing with you. Um, over these next four weeks, starting next week. So we'd love to have you come back, bring someone with you. But hey, right now, it's Vision Sunday. I hope you're excited. And we want to kick off our portion today by sharing a big announcement with you. Uh, we were promoing on social media. Maybe you heard me say, there's a huge announcement. And uh, I'm excited. Honestly, along this journey of Project Church in nine years, We've never had a full-time worship pastor at our church. And there's been a time, and there's been times when Chris and I are like, I don't think we're ever going to find somebody. And uh, we just kept praying and believing and asking. And uh, you've probably noticed that the last few weeks we've had uh, Justin with us. And so today I'm excited, Chrissy and I are excited, to introduce our brand new worship pastor, Justin Goss. Get on your feet. Come on. Welcome up to Project Church. We got the whole fam here. So I almost took her hat off. You can be seated. So listen, uh, we've taken our time with this because we wanted, they wanted to make sure that this was where God wanted them. And we wanted to make sure that they were the right people for this team. And we were all trying to figure this out together. So that's why he's been here for like almost two months now. Uh, and we hadn't said anything and everyone's like, what's going on? Who is this guy? Like, why is he here so much? Like, is he the guy? And uh, he met with our board, he met with our team. We've taken our time, we've really done our due diligence as a church and them as people, because they wanted to come into this the right way. And finally, God confirmed it for all of us. And so today is their official first Sunday as the worship pastors of Project Church. Tomorrow, we get to have them in the office with us for the first time. And uh, it's an exciting season, but I wanted Justin to introduce his wife, Asia, and all the, the kids. Obviously, they have this beautiful family. You can see them on the screen. I, it's funny. We got them on the screen, and you're right in front of you, you know. But, hey, whatever works. That's how we do it at our Project Church. So, um, man, Justin, greet the people and uh, introduce your amazing family. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm so excited, and I really believe God's doing something special here. And um, I remember my first day, I just was like, Felt like I was at home, and Jen, aka my twin, she was like, "Hey, brother, I text everyone. I text everybody, and I wanted everyone to know that we want you to be here." And I don't, I'm like, "Calm down, okay." And uh, and uh, I'm so grateful that I really um, I don't feel like it's family. It is family. And uh, when I first met your pastors, um, I, I knew that they would change my family's life, and not just for the position, but just as friends and as mentors. And so I appreciate you guys. I love you guys so much. And um, we're going to make this fire in Jesus' name. Um, 
Come on. All right. And so this is uh, my daughter, Avery. She's eight. Um, she's a thug. Um, this is, uh, follow her on Instagram, official Avery. Uh, this is my wife, uh, Asia. Uh, come on, y'all better give her Tomorrow, we'll be married 12 years. Hallelujah. I didn't think we'll make it past three months, but we did it. Amen. If you know, you know. Um, and then um, that's my son, Joseph. He's one. He is really sleep. He is sleep for the king right now. He is getting. Um, this is my junior, Justin Jr. We call him BJ. And then that's my eldest, my, my boo, my second mom, uh, uh, Ajana. And uh, we're excited. We, we completely want to be here. We don't want to be the artist worship pastor. We're going to be pastors and members of Project Church. I'm sorry for calling you guys District Church last Sunday. Um, it was awkward. If you know, you know. If you were there, I almost threw the mic. We had to start the whole service over. Good thing they didn't post that online. He sent it to me. It was kind of rude, but. They're all, they're all, they're all usually late for worship anyway. So, <laughs> so they missed it. Three quarters of a missed it. <laughs> yes. Hey, hey, this this is so, some encouragement yeah. for the pastor. Justin, next week you're like, oh, we have a worship pastor. Why don't y'all get here on time for worship, okay? Yeah. Come amen, on. amen. Be here at 1050. <laughs> right. No, nah, but we're excited to be here. So I love you guys. You guys are family. Um, look forward to building great relationships for years to come. So we're going to pray over them, and Chrissy's going to pray over them. But I want to let you know, in two weeks, uh, we are in the middle of this relationship series, and we're going to have uh, Justin and Asia up on the stage with us. We're going to talk to them a little bit so you can get to know them more, um, hear more about their heart for worship, their relationship, ups, downs, all around. Like That's what Chrissy and I have experienced as well, and so it's going to be a great time in two weeks. Um, but hey, make sure you welcome them, say hey to them, introduce yourselves. They're, they're still getting to know everybody, and so we're just so excited. So can we do some churchy? Reach your hands out towards this amazing family. Our staff and board are going to come up. Come on up um, and join us as we pray over this amazing family. Chrissy, pray for us. God, we just thank you so much for what you're doing in Project Church. Um, it's not a building, it's people, and you've brought these people to our family. So I pray right now, Lord God, that you would anoint them. Fill them up right now. I ask for just, um, your, you are their portion. God, I pray that you would overflow, that the anointing would flow. Lord Jesus, that you would fill them up in the places that they don't even know were empty right now. God, I pray that you would fill them up to overflowing. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for their lives. I thank you for what you're going to do in and through them. And I thank you for what they're bringing, but what also that this congregation is going to deposit into them and what they're going to deposit into this new family. And so, Jesus, have your way, God, as we step into new territory, as we step into a new season, and as we trust you for more than we can even ask, think, or imagine, thank you that you're going to do exceedingly and abundantly more. We trust you for that. And, God, I thank you for these children. Lord God, I think that we're not just hiring Justin, we're hiring this family. We thank you, Lord God, that you're going to do something. They're stepping to their next season, that you're, you're helping them understand their destiny and their next step and what you're calling them to do and what you've appointed them for. So, Jesus, we just say thank you. We are grateful and we trust you in this next season. We give you them. We give them back to you, Lord Jesus, because um, this is your plan. This is your way, and we trust your ways are higher than ours. So we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this gift. I mean, your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Give it up one more time for them. Come on. Welcome to the team. Goss family. Man, how exciting is this? What a great way to start our Vision Sunday. I know you guys are excited, and uh, thank you for your prayers in this journey. Thank you for your faithfulness, church, and being here, giving. Um, you know, God is doing something, and it takes all of us. How many of you know? Uh, this church wasn't built on the gifts of a few, but on the sacrifices of many. And so thank you for being a part of this and building what God is building here. But we want to jump in today. We are closing out this series on the favor of God. Uh, how many of you enjoyed this series? You got something out of it. If you missed any of it, you can go back, watch on YouTube, po listen to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify. We're everywhere. Uh, but, man, I think it's so cool that we've been in this series on favor. And I, I was honest with you guys a couple weeks back when we kicked off this series that I retired favor. I wouldn't preach on favor, never taught on it in the history of Project Church because I just had this association with it, with uh, with prosperity teaching. And 
I, I, I was just like, man, I'm going to retire favor, put it on a banner, rose it to the rafters of Project Church, and said, I'm never teaching on favor. And then God started to convict me the end of last year and said, I want you to kick off the year with a series on favor and title it Favor of God. And so we gave you stickers today to take home. They say favor of God on them. Stick them everywhere. And uh, they're in your packets on your seats. But, but as I was digging into this, God was like, I want you to redeem and restore favor in my church. Because how many know the word of God tells us over and over that the favor of God is upon his children. The favor of God is upon your life. And so I started teaching in this series. And I was receiving, I think, more than I was even giving. And God was reminding me about his favor and the encouragement of favor. I don't know about you. But I don't want to walk in failure. I don't want to wake up with the mindset of defeat. I want to wake up and start my day with the mindset of favor. That everywhere I go, the favor of God is upon me. Every room I step into, the favor is on me. Every relationship, every connection, every job, the favor of God is upon me. Come on, church. How many are excited for the favor of God on your life? But today we want to share with you about how favor is a choice. Because here's what I believe. If you choose Jesus, then favor will follow you. And so if we have chosen Jesus, if you are a person, if you are a church that is choosing Jesus, let me tell you, the favor is going to follow you. But every day we have to wake up and decide to choose favor. So here's what I was thinking about. Chris and I were talking about this as we were preparing for this message. Is I think that there's a lot of people in this last couple of years that left their church because it didn't align with their politics. But I wonder how many people left their politics because it didn't align with their church. And I was thinking about this because we, we feel so divided, don't we? Like just divided on so many topics like, uh, do you, are, are you pro-vax or anti-vax? Are you right wing or left wing? Are you this perspective or that perspective? There's all these dividing lines. And I believe God wants us to carry favor. And when you walk with favor, how many of you know that means that you walk with a perspective that's different than this world? The culture, the spirit of this world wants to divide us. But God's people are a people of unity. And we walk into every room with the favor on us. And the favor will take us into relationships with people who think different than us have different perspectives than us, don't align with us ideologically, politically, but we still carry the favor and say, I'm here for you to build and speak into your life. Here's what's happened these last couple of years. I think Chris and I recognize this, uh, especially this last year, a lot of people leaving California, leaving Sacramento. And I'm not against you if that's what's coming for you. Like, let me tell you, God's going to lead your family. He's going to direct your, your steps in your life. And if he leads you, walk in obedience. But I realized that with people abandoning and leaving our state, that God was giving me a greater love for our state and this city than ever before. And so that's our job as pastors, to lead you in a way that says the favor of God is upon you. But you have to choose favor every single day. To choose to wake up with the mindset of favor every single day. To choose to wake up with the mindset that says, man, God is for me. And I'm before wherever he's placed me in this season. And so how does this connect? Today I want to read, and Chrissy's going to read it from Jeremiah chapter 29. And last week I, I, I shared a message from Daniel, the story of Daniel. You guys know Daniel and Lions then. And Daniel, he, he had his boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who end up in the fiery furnace. What we know about them is that they were kidnapped. The people of Israel are attacked by the nation of Babylon. God was getting their attention because they were worshiping idols. They, they were caught up in all the wrong things. So he sends this nation. They attack Israel, take all the people captive, break down the walls, burn down the temple, and bring them back to a nation, a land that is not their own. The Bible says they're exiles in the land of Babylon. And I don't know about you, but as a Christian, sometimes I feel like I don't belong. I'm in this culture. I'm in this state. I'm in this world, and I feel like I don't belong. I feel like I'm an exile. I feel like I'm a, a person in a land that is not my own. And yet, God speaks to Jeremiah, and he says, I want you to give this word to my people about how they're to live in a land that is not theirs. The perspective they're supposed to have in, in a land, in a place that, that they would not claim as their own. And I think we can relate to this. 
Because as Christians, we often don't feel like we belong. And yet there's a call on us. As the people of God. In the land that he's placed us. So Christy's going to read it for us. Jeremiah 29, 4 through 8, and then I'm going to skip down to 11 through 14. Again, this is going to bring us more context. Oftentimes we've read Jeremiah 29, 11. We take that for our life like we know exactly what that verse is. And we take just what we want it to be. But God's giving us a little bit more insight as we read the verses before it and behind it. So here we go. Verse 4, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace, of pro peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So this scripture, I think it's so important for us to understand, again, that this is written for the Israelites. Some of us want to read this, and verse 11 says, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And you're like, sweet, anything that's happened to me, God, you know, you have a, you have a plan, but we take it to the prosperity gospel. So this is actually perfect to be preaching on in the middle of a series where we're reframing and reclaiming favor. The Lord is reminding um, these, these Israelites that he is doing something good in a situation that seems really bad. And somebody needs to hear that for them right now. Prosperity and favor may not feel the way we want it to feel. And he's reminding us that we can choose him. We can choose favor. When we choose God's perspective, we're choosing favor. And so often we, we walk around with what I was talking about even earlier, like, oh, no, we're being sent to exile. Where, where are you, God? What are you doing? Why are the, all these, these things happening to me? This is so frustrating. How many people know that the last couple of years have been frustrating, right? And so God's reminding us and reminding them that what you think was meant for evil is actually going to help you because he works all things together for the good of those who love him. So he's reminding us right now to choose favor, choose the right mindset. So how do we do that? A church that chooses favor, we're choosing favor this year, loves where we live. Loves where we live. That's the first point for you. It says in verse 4, excuse me, 5, build houses and settle down. When Caleb and I were looking for a house to live in, we really wanted to move, every real estate agent was telling us, location, 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 right? Location, location, location. And that's a great thought when it comes to earthly perspective. But when it comes to um, kingdom perspective, we need to not just think about location. We need to think about people, people, people. People, people, people. You know, I, I think the church is so great at saying love God, love people. But we, but we don't like where we live. We don't like where God's put us, where he's placed us. And sometimes I wonder if we're really loving God and loving people if we hate the place that we're at. Because the place is not that God has us, the purpose of it is not for you to be in the right location. It's for you to, write, to be around the right people. So I'm just wanting to challenge us to love where you live. Love where God has put you. Love what he can build in you and through you because he has people there that you're going to be doing that with. So this is about not location, location, location. This is about people, people, people. Love where you live. He's placed you someplace for a reason because there's some people that you're supposed to be doing life with. That's so good. I think that as I think about that, so often we're like, well, I'm not where I want to be. You know, maybe this isn't where you see yourself long term. And, but what I think is what happens is we can miss out on what God wants to do where we are right now if we're always thinking about where we want to be. 
I'm not saying that you can't say, hey, one day we're going to live here or move here. Or, you know, I'm feeling called back here, maybe somewhere you grew up or, or just somewhere God's speaking to you about. But what I am saying is don't miss the opportunity yeah. right now to love the people where God has placed you. God wants you to make the most. He has a purpose for you right now. Your purpose doesn't start when you get there. Your purpose doesn't start when you get to where you want to be. Your purpose is right now, even if it's where you didn't see yourself. But God has you. It comes down to the people that God has placed around you and loving them. And for us, listen, we have a heart to plant churches. That's part of our mission statement. Our vision statement at Project Church is to lead all people to find life and freedom in Jesus. All people. God is for all people. But our mission statement is it would be a church that makes disciples and plants churches. And let me tell you, the best way to make disciples is to plant churches. Today is the nine-year anniversary of Project Church. We started this church nine years ago. Uh, it, it started a little before that in a living room with Chrissy and I and two other couples, six of us. That was how Project Church started. And now we have this beautiful building in old Sacramento. Our church has been growing we had our best year ever financially this past year. God has blessed us. There's been abundance. There's been overflow, which was our year in 2021. And listen, God is now speaking to us that we would re-up on some of the things we've declared over these last few years. Last year, we declared on Vision Sunday we were going to plant a church in the Roseville, Rockland area. And we are re-upping on that as a church. So this year, we're going to start having interest meetings, start connecting with people to build the next campus for Project Church in the Roseville, Rockland area. Why? Because we want to love where we live. We want to make disciples where God has called us to. And he's called us to this region. And I believe that coming, God is saying to us, as Chrissy read, build houses. He wants us to build houses of God in the place and the cities that he's called us to. And so I believe not just one, but multiple church plants are going to be launched out of this church as we build houses of God to make disciples fulfill the great commission that God has put upon us. This is a church that chooses favor. We love where we live. A church that chooses favor, second, builds where God's called us. It goes on, it says, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Man, I love this church because we're full of entrepreneurs. We got a bunch of entrepreneurs in this church that, that are planting gardens. And how many of some of y'all ain't eating yet, but you're faithful, okay? You're like, I'm planting God. When am I going to eat the produce? But let me tell you, I look around, I see that God is putting in our hearts that we would birth new things. We would plant new gardens. We would plant new vineyards in this city. That's why we launched Blueprint Coffee. This is an old school, this is like a, the New Testament well right here. We got people that come in every day. And almost every single Sunday I meet someone that says, yeah, I came to the coffee shop and found out this was a church, so I'm here to check it out. God has given us favor with Blueprint. It's been greatly successful for us as, a, as an organization and as an opportunity to connect with our community. Last year we announced we're going to launch a co-working space in our building. In October we launched the CoLab right upstairs that is up and running now. Maybe you're looking for a place to work outside of your home. We have a co-working space upstairs. Why? God is calling us to plant gardens. And I believe when we plant, when we plant where God has placed us, that we will see a harvest that is coming to this church. Hear me? I believe there's a harvest coming. We're already starting to see it. This last year was the beginning of it. And I believe God is moving on our hearts so we would choose favor. We would be a church that chooses favor. That means building where we're called, planting where God has called us. And I cannot wait to see the produce, the fruit that comes out of all the planting that this church body is going to do. And this is for our organization, but it's also for you individually. I mean, oh, God is calling you to plant some things. He's calling you to plant some seeds, to build some things. And I want to encourage you, you would do it. You would walk faithfully. It was crazy. After the 9 a.m. service, I had multiple people come to me and tell me dreams that God has given them. To, to start uh, uh, nonprofits, to help kids, to start uh, uh, sports ministries and all these things that people were telling me God has birthed in their heart. Today was a reminder for them that they would build, they would plant. And I believe more dreams are going to be released in this church. That's what favor looks like. Can we choose favor? Church, let's choose favor. Yeah, next we have a church that chooses favor grows the next generation. Listen, we're not just building for today. We're building for tomorrow. I mean, I feel like that sounds like a, a sales pitch for you. We're not building for today. We're building for tomorrow. But truly, if we are asking ourselves as a church, 
what makes us the most successful, then we are thinking about the future. We were at a conference that Justin mentioned earlier, and we're really challenged in this thought of what does success look like? You've heard us say it from here, like community groups are doing well. You're going to hear about how we're having you know, the most community groups that we've ever launched in a season, this season. So make sure um, next week and the week following, we're launching community groups. We have the most community group leaders signed up. And so you will be able to find a friend. You will find your friend. You will find your people at Project Church when you sign up for a community group. But is, is success at Project Church the amount of community groups we have? You've even heard us say time and again that, you know, generosity is privilege, but continue to be generous, generous and be faithful in your giving. And, you know, it's been a successful year because it's been our greatest number, um, our highest number in giving. Way to go. You should give yourselves a hand clap because of that. God's been. <laughs> but are the things that we applaud as people typically really what makes us successful? I would venture to say No. And we are challenged in this thought that there are some seeds that we've planted yesterday and today, and we won't see the fruit of until 20 years from now, and we may not know our success until 20 years from now. And for some of us, we need to start saying after a Sunday is really phenomenal, and you guys are asking us, how great was Sunday? And we were like, woo, there are a lot of people in the room. It was a full house. You would think right now is being successful, but the true judgment of success will be what comes from your life in 20 years. And for me, that looks like what happens in my kids' life. And for me, it's like what happens in the lives of people 20 years from now that I spent time with. We may not know. So we need to start answering the question of, like, how great was Sunday? You know, we'll see next in 20 years. That's the challenge for us. And I did take that from Banning. In case, in case you're listening, Banning, I took that from you. It was a really great thought. But let me tell you, we're going to grow the next generation. We're going to have the generation be our goal, the next generation. The next generation is actually not just, you know, they're not experiencing a junior Holy Spirit right now because they're younger than us. They're experiencing the same Holy Spirit that we're experiencing here right now. And the fruit of their lives will show that and reveal that the faith of a child right now, they're gonna, we're going to experience the fruit of their lives 20 years from now. And that will be the judgment of success, so to say. How are the generations after us loving God? Are they loving God more than we are loving them? Are we um, attached to our methods or are we willing to see the next generation take this church and make it look something different than what we thought it was going to be? Generations, grow the next generation. It says, Mary, have kids. Increase the number there. Do not decrease. Do not decrease. So how many people getting married in this place? Raise your hand. All right, how many people are engaged? Too soon. Um, <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many people are praying to be married? All right, come on. I saw look, hands I, this go is up. where you don't lift a, it up high. Don't be ashamed. And it's okay, there's a few side, you know, no you can check, you game. can look around right now. Marry, have kids. And if you're like, oh, I'm not even thinking about that, hey, maybe you need to serve in the kids' area. There's a lot of need there. And maybe God will bring somebody else there who's serving too, who's single. I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> who knows? But we're going to be doing some things that we're, we're going to put our money where our mouth is. And we're going to invest in the next generation. One way we're doing that is we're having something called um, GLOW. If any of the women who went to fashion, yeah, that's right, get excited about it. Any of the women who went to fashion, you heard about it, but essentially it's a fashion for young girls, 7 to 12. And this is what we are, this is where we're saying they can have a full experience that we have here in the auditorium just catered and curated for them. And while they're in this room, we're going to have a, a meeting with the rest of the parents who don't want to make it a date day. <laughs> you can go upstairs and we're going to provide resources and a, and a panel of people who are going to share with wisdom and knowledge with you to help you gain more parenting and leadership tools for your family. So that's GLOW this year. We're going to have an Easter Kids event that's going to reserve this whole block so that we can have a lot of space to do a lot of fun things, even to have an Easter bunny. We're going to raise up the next generation of leaders. Already we've been hearing from Sam and his team about how they're raising up leader ambassadors that are youth aged, okay? They're not like leaders who are young adults that are pouring to the next generation. No, we believe that the generation, there's leaders there right now, and they're going to be empowered to lead their friends and family to Jesus. We're going to continue to have more resources for parents 
and for adults and leaders so that they can have strong families. We had a semester of strengthening families where families were, be able, were able to build community with other families in the church, but also found very practical tools that could help them strengthen their families. We're going to continue to provide that for this church because we believe we need to invest in the next generation. Yeah, I just want to speak out. I mean, I, I've been saying this to a few people lately. You know, we're in a generation right now where we're having less kids than ever before, uh, lowest birth rates. And uh, some of it is because of health things, but a lot of it is just choice. And so I just want to tell you, like, I'm going to just speak it out, that God, I believe, wants us as Christians to have as many kids as possible. And here's why. Hey, listen, listen, listen. And here's why. Because we are in a land not our own, in a culture that is overtaking a lot of perspectives with anti-biblical perspectives. And we need Christian homes raising up children of God that will step into their communities, their schools, their neighborhoods, and future leaders to have the heart of Jesus and a biblical perspective. And so I'm just speaking it out, be fruitful and multiply. And listen, I'm, I'm also speaking it out. I know there's been fertility issues in, in our church. I'm speaking out healing over wombs right now. I'm speaking out a touch on women's bodies. And maybe God is leading some of you, as Justin was just up here as a foster kid, leading some of you to foster, to adopt, that you would step into some child's life. Um, there's been a couple families in our church recently who have adopted children. And so here's why we, we got to be for the next generation, church. And so I want that to stir up in your heart and spirit. It is something that we're believing, man. I'm not raising up three little gremlins to just, like, survive this life. I'm speaking leadership. I'm speaking the call of God. I'm speaking the Holy Spirit onto their life. We got a saying in our home. I used to do it every day. We dropped them off for school. Uh, right before they got out of the car, I'd say, who are we? And they say, we're Coles. And I say, and what do we do? And they say, we win. Every day after school, I was speaking into leadership and winning over my kids. It made them a little too competitive. And also, I had, to, I had to help them out. What is winning, though? And the kids will tell you. What is winning? Never give up. Have a good attitude. And try your best. Try your best. That's nice. Who are we? We're Coles. What do we do? We win. We got some winners in this house. Come on, church. Make some noise. Clarify the vision. Clarify the vision. Okay. <laughs> I'm raising up winners for Jesus. <laughs> a church that chooses favor shows up for the city. Everybody say for. The church has been defined for too long for what it's against more than what it's for. As for Project Church, we will be known what we're for. That's why when you come in here for your first time, you get a t-shirt that says for Sacramento. When you walk into our lobby, you see a sign in neon lights that says for Sacramento. Why? Because we are for yeah. this city. We will be a church that shows up for the city. What does it say here in this text? I, I, I love that it says here in verse 7, also seek the peace. Everybody say peace. And prosperity, everybody say prosperity, of the city to which I have carried you into exile. It says pray for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Why do we work, get up, and be for our city? Why? Because when it prospers, we prosper. Because we carry favor on us. And I believe we release favor wherever we go. We will be for our city. And so I'm here to declare to you today, we, this last year you saw in the video, if you were paying attention, it said we had 26 or 24 projects, hope projects that we did. On time we were serving food, uh, we were meeting needs, we were blessing schools, uh, we were out in the community cleaning up old sack. We were doing a lot in our city. We are re-upping this year even more, and we're rebranding it from Hope Days and Hope Projects to Four Sacramento Days. Four Sacramento Projects. Why? Because we want this city to know we are for them. We're going to work for the prosperity of this city. We're going to work for the peace of this city. Listen, I, I know some of us, we're all about prayer. We're going to get there in a moment. We're a church that's all about prayer. We pray as if it depends on God. But I want to tell you right now, we also work as if it depends on us. We can be both end. Yeah. We can be prayer warriors that go to God first, but those who also get up and take our hands and our feet and say, we're the hands and feet of Jesus. We're going to go out and work for this city. 
And here's the thing. If we're also, if it says here that when it prospers, you prosper, I really believe that this is a reminder of our calling. We say here at Project Church, servanthood is our calling. And it's based off of this idea that when we serve others, we receive what we're, what we're serving them with. If we're looking for hope, we're going to help others find hope. And if we're outside of ourselves, we're fulfilling our calling. And this is a portion of doing that is fulfilling our calling. Not before being, but doing. But let me move on to a church that chooses favor, praise first. This is our being. This is us aligning with who God has, who, want, what he, who he wants us to be. When we determine who he is first, when you're praying, sometimes we're like, oh, it's just listing off all the things that we want. No, we are saying as an individual that he is all that he says he is and we're putting our trust in him. Prayer, you know, every month and weekly, it's not a, something that we check off of a list. It's not something that we do. It's saying that, God, I'm going to move and have my being in you by submitting all my thoughts to you first. So that's what prayer is. Pray. It says this. In verse 7, thank you. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it. Pray to the Lord for it. Pray. Here's the thing. We have a lot of strategies. We have a lot of things that we can do. We can build. We can plant. We have entrepreneurial ideas. But we've learned the more and more that we launch new things, the more and more God needs to refine them. Because sometimes when there's a good idea, we take it from being a God idea to our idea. And sometimes start taking credit for it. And, man, I think that the greatest thing we learned when we went away for five weeks on sabbatical last year was that there were a lot of ambitions in us that needed to be refined. That needed to be refined, which means that sometimes our selfish nature needed to be burnt off of those ideas. And the truth of the matter is, is we're human, and God gives us ideas, but sometimes it's birth out of our flesh. Or sometimes it's desires that God has that he just wants to continue to align with heaven. It's praying is constantly saying, God, I'm aligning my ideas that you've put in me to begin with, with heaven's ideas. It's an alignment issue, and we want to say that this is our first response, not our last reaction or resorts. You know, I want to get to a place where, you know, we're always trained in psychological ventures. And we're, we're just saying, we're always constantly reminded to don't have, like, reactions. Just have responses. So you stop and you think and you pray about things before you react. Well, I want to get to the point where I'm praying so often and it really is my life goal to be in constant communication with my Lord and Savior that my first reaction and my first response is going to God. We want to get that desperate and that dependent on him. The point of praying is to be dependent on him. I had a really good friend. She told me um, last week, it was or last week, last year, it was a bit of a rough emotional year um, for me. And then even everybody in, on our staff, the things that we've all endured, it was just a really hard year for all of us, for everyone in the world, really. But... There came a point where she just got kind of honest with me in a very nice way. And she was like, um, Chrissy, you know, you're, you're really strong. You've gotten through a lot of hard things in your strength. And there was a moment where I'm like, it doesn't sound like a compliment. And it was because it wasn't. She was reminding me that, man, you're really strong in your own flesh and in your own strength. And it's actually become striving a little bit. And then I had, you know, that was a close friend who was trying to be nice. And then I had a coach in my life um, who she was just like, you're just depending on yourself way too much. And I think that some of us need to hear that hard truth, that the striving is dependence on yourself and perhaps we're not praying enough. And it's not because I'm saying pray more, strive more. No, it's prayer is aligning with God and his ideas and depending on him and him alone. So we want to be a church that's dependent on him because the power comes from prayer to the powerful one. Prayer is our power. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to continue. We're going to pray. We're going to continue our once a month first Wednesdays. How many people have been enjoying those first Wednesdays? Every first Wednesday, Wednesday we come here at 7 o'clock and we pray because we don't want to move a step before God, before he tells us to go before he tells us to move, okay? Yeah. So that's what 
First Wednesdays are four, but we're like, why make it just once a month? If we plan to pray, then we're going to be people of prayer. But if we fail to plan to pray, then we're not going to be prayer warriors at all. And we're going to be dependent on ourselves. So we said, why not weekly have a 12 to 1 o'clock hour where this church is invited to come into this room and seek God's faith. And very, very intentionally, we're not going to sing a bunch of songs up here. Because sometimes I believe that we rely on worshiping and singing than actually giving our honest thoughts to God. Sometimes we rely on the, the words of other songwriters than our, the own, our own words in our hearts. So I want you to just know that we're going to focus on being a people of prayer. It doesn't say in the scriptures, the disciples don't say, God, teach us how to preach. God, teach us how to lead. It doesn't say, God, teach us how to do the Project Kids class. No, it says, God, teach us how to pray. And I believe we're going to learn how to pray this year on a deeper level than we've ever gone before. So practically speaking, this Wednesday is first Wednesdays, 7 p.m. We do it every first Wednesday, uh, hour-ish of prayer and worship, just seeking God. But then starting the following week, so the 9th, every Wednesday from 12 to 1 p.m. I know it's the middle of the day, so not everyone can come. may not work with your schedule. But we'll be here praying, our whole staff and then anyone in the church that wants to come. One hour, 12 to 1. Maybe your schedule is flexible. Maybe you can, you can shoot down for a part of the time. But we'd love to have you come. And we want to be a church of prayer. A church that every week there's prayers going up from this body. Why? Because God... It says, hears the cries of his people. We actually see that here in this text. Uh, as, as Jeremiah is declaring and God is speaking through him, he says, I'll be found by you, declares the Lord. Bring you back from captivity and, and will bring you to the place. It says, I will hear your cries. It says, come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You know that God listens when you pray. You know you can move the heart of God through your prayers. God actually can, can, can shift and change. We see it throughout scripture that God would be going one way and the people would cry out to him and would shift even the plans. Why? Because God responds to his people, the cries of his people. A church that chooses favor prays first. And finally, the church, a church that chooses favor, has and makes favor a mindset. I want you to hear me, church you got to have a favor mindset. you got to have a perspective that favor is upon you. Listen, I know, like Chrissy was saying, it's been a hard year for a lot of people. I know that maybe you're in the middle of a storm. You're in the middle of a struggle. You've been through some circumstances, some struggles. You've been through some hard things. I preached it the first week, what favor feels like. How many know favor doesn't always feel like favor? But I want my wife can stand here and declare to you and before everyone that even though she went through one of the hardest years of her life, now she looks back and says, that was the favor of God upon me. You want to know why? Because she's stronger because of it. She has more tools because of it. She's a better leader, a better wife, a better pastor, a better mother because of it. When you walk through the struggles, that doesn't mean the favor is upon you. In fact, I would say the complete opposite. If you don't ever find yourself in a struggle, then I don't think you really have favor. But when the enemy sees what you carry, he's going to come against you. But God can take whatever it is, whatever circumstance, struggle, storm, valley, he can take it and turn it to something good if you are his child. And so I'm declaring today, I know it's been a year of struggles, it's been a year of storms. But God is going to take those and he's going to turn it into your favor. That's why every morning I wake up and say, God, I want to have a favor mindset. I want to make favor my mindset. Not, not failure, not the lies that have been spoken over me, not what someone has said about me, not the, the betrayal I experienced, not any of the, the situations I find myself in. That is not my identity. That is not who I am. No, I'm going to have a favor mindset that, God, you will work this out for my good. You will do what Jeremiah 29, 11, because now that we have the context of this whole scripture, these people are in exile in a land not their own. They're far from where they thought they would be. They're not where they thought they'd be at this point in their life, like many of you. But God is speaking to them. He says, I want you to make the most of where I placed you. 
I want you to build where I've placed you. I want you to plant where I've placed you. I want you to build families where I've placed you. I want you to bless and speak peace and prosperity into this city. I want you to walk in favor. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me. I will hear you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. You know, we had a moment during worship. Justin and Sam were sharing from their heart. You want to know why? There was so much emotion. It's because they've been through some things. And when you've been th through some things, how many of you know you understand the goodness of God in a greater way? When you've been through some struggles... When you've been knocked down, beat up, when you walk through some of the hardest times of your life, that's when you begin to really recognize that I'm nothing without God. I have to lean on God. That's what a favor mindset looks like. And so I know you've been through a lot of stuff. So have we. But God is saying to you today, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I want to give you a future and a hope. I'm working for your welfare. Today, somebody needs to receive this because you've been walking in a mindset that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't see you, that God's given up on you, that you've done too much that God could ever use you. And God right now is speaking all the opposites of that. He's saying, I see you. I know you. I have plans for you. I'm going to prosper you. My hand is upon you. The favor of God is on our lives, church. Can we walk? Can we choose? Can we make favor our mindset? We want to declare that over our church today. You all got these. They're on your chairs. The word for our church in 2022 is favor. We're declaring that today. That over this church, our word is favor. But what we want you to do is we want you to right now ask God, God, what's my word? What's my phrase? What do you want me to declare? Christy and I have found when we make our vision clear for our families, we come back to it when things are tough. So last year, it was overflow. And let me tell you, every time we were in a lack moment, a season of pain or struggle, we came back and said, this is our year of overflow. And there was peace. And there was joy. And there was encouragement in the midst of struggle. And so today, I want you, with God, to say, God, what is my word? What is my phrase? What am I to declare over myself? For 2022. I also want you to understand that Jeremiah was a prophet. And when you receive prophecies here today, it's not somebody telling you what the intricate details are of your life in the future. It's a word of encouragement. So if you're struggling to find a word that you're going to speak over your life, I just want you to know that you are prophesying over your life and what God wants to do in and through you. So what is the area that you need to be encouraged in? What is the area that God keeps on bringing to your mind? What, is, what are the things that he's bringing to your mind and to your heart? That will help you determine, like, I'm going to prophesy over my life. We're prophesying favor right now. We're prophesying in a, in a time where people are leaving California over our church and people are leaving churches even. We're saying, God, we're just going to declare favor over that. So if that helps you in any way um, to know that you are prophesying over your life. You're declaring God's goodness in your life and the goodness or the area of your life that you're hoping for goodness. Jeremiah was bringing hope to people that needed to be reminded of who their God was. So what is it that you believe God is trying to remind your heart and spirit about for your future? Listen, when you choose Jesus, you are choosing favor. And I think that there's someone in this room, in a room this large, that you say, Caleb, I want to declare a word over my life. I want to walk in the favor of God in my life. But honestly, I haven't even surrendered fully to Jesus. You haven't chosen Jesus. Maybe you've been running from Jesus. You turned your back on Jesus. You tried it in your way, in your strength. Well, today is your day to choose Jesus. Because in so doing, you choose the favor of God on your life. So I'm going to ask every head to be bowed, every eye closed in this room. This is a private moment. Why? Because I want you to get alone with God. And I want you to hear from God. So first off, if you're in this room, you say, Caleb, that's me. I don't feel the favor of God in my life, but it's because I've been running from God. I haven't chosen Jesus. And he's chased you down 
to this moment in this room. You've been running, but it's time to come home. It's time to choose Jesus. For the first time or again, I want you to lift your hand right now in this room if that's you. You need to choose Jesus. Go, go. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, church. Give God some praise right now. Hands going up all around the room. You can put them down. I need everyone to pray this with me right now. Pray this with Chrissy and I. Say, Jesus, I need you right now to come into my life. I choose you. Thank you for choosing me. I ask you to release your favor. I receive salvation. I confess my sin. I'm nothing without you. I can't earn favor. I don't deserve favor, but you give it anyways. So thank you, Jesus, for your favor in your name. Amen. Come on, give God another shout of praise right now in this place. Second thing, we're going to sing. As we sing, I want you to take a moment as an individual or with your spouse, and I want you to write down your word for the year. I want you to pick one right now. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, what is it? Talk to your wife. Talk to your, your significant other. And then I want you to rip it apart. It's perforated. I want you to bring one side. You can keep the small side or the big side. We don't care. But I want you to get up. Once you write your word down, I want you to come down here and lay it at the altar. Lay it on the stage as a declaration. This is the vision for our family. This is the vision for my life. This is the vision for my year. I'm going to walk in this. I'm going to hold on to this. And I want you to keep the other part. So as we sing, write down your word. Come, lay it down. Give it to God. Declare it over your life. Declare the vision over your life. And then I want you to go back and I want you to worship with us before we close today. Come on, church. Declare it today. What is it, what it is that God is putting on your life? Declare that word. Let's sing. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you Thank you. 
Come on, can we give it up, Vision Sunday? What a great Sunday. I think that was everything we needed it to be. Uh, listen, if it's your first time here, you're a VIP. Uh, Justin said this during the 9 o'clock. I don't know if he said it again during the 11. But this isn't just a church, this is home. And if this is your first time here, we want to welcome you into the family. All we ask for you is that you text the word new to church to 97,000. And if you don't want to do that, hey, cool, whatever. Go out here, turn left. You're going to see some people. There's a bunch of orange signs. Look for the orange. All right, we want to hook you up with a coffee and t-shirt for coming today. But more importantly, we want to get you connected to the heart of the church. But there's a few other ways that people can do that. And how is that? Yeah, we also want to remind you that if you are interested in leading a community group, free luncheon right after this service, Go upstairs if it's something you want to do or you're maybe just thinking about doing and you want to get more information. Go upstairs. Yeah, do that. I know y'all are trying to go watch the football game, but if you want to launch a group, that's the way to do it. Um, also, first Wednesdays is this Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here at the church. I want to tell you real quick, before you come, you have the word for the year. I know a lot of you laid these down, and this is a step of faith right here. This might be believing for something that you are doubting yourself. Bring this back. Maybe you brought your other side your other side that you didn't drop off or maybe just come with that word in mind. We want to pray for you. Uh, we're going to do that today, but first Wednesdays, we really want to pray for you, believing that these words, that God will redeem and give you exactly what you're asking for this year. So first Wednesdays, 7 p.m., right here on Wednesday. February the 2nd. Can you believe it's almost February? Not at all. I know. First <laughs> month of My birthday in a few weeks after that. Oh, yeah. My Venmo name is, not just kidding, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right, finally... On the patio as you leave, we have free Zoe tacos, so go check that out. We also have a photo booth in the lobby, free as well. Enjoy. It's a beautiful day out there. Favor of God on you, Project Wait, wait, wait. Church. One last thing, one last thing, one last thing before you go. If you're a parent in here, I didn't, I didn't get permission to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Uh, we're doing a parents meet and greet. If you have a, a kid that's in middle school or high school, you want to get connected to other parents upstairs in about 15 minutes, meet us up there. Other than that, go Rams. God bless. Yeah. Our prayer team will be down here. Before you go that way, come this way. If you have a prayer need in your life, God bless.